welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 15, Part 3, Pharmacology. Well, here we are, the very last episode. Part 1, Drug Reactions. We have quite a few terms here related to drugs and drug reactions, and a lot of these are tricky, so I'm going to go over these slowly with you. Number 1 is pharmacology, P-H-A-R-M-A-C-O-L-O-G-Y. Pharmacology is the study of the nature, uses, and effects of drugs used for medical purposes. The second term is pharmacist, P-H-A-R-M-A-C-I-S-T. A pharmacist is a specialist who formulates and dispenses prescribed medications. And the pharmacist and, say, a pharmacologist are two different things. A pharmacologist who does pharmacology is more of a drug researcher. This is someone who would develop compounds that could be used as drugs. The pharmacist is the person in your neighborhood pharmacy who puts the prescription together for you and makes sure that you're getting the correct drug that's been prescribed to you. The next term is generic, G-E-N-E-R-I-C. Generic refers to a drug that's named for its chemical structure and it's not protected by a brand name or trademark. For example, diazepam is a generic name. It's the generic name for Valium. The next term is compliance. C-O-M-P-L-I-A-N-C-E. Compliance is a patient's consistency and accuracy in taking medication or some other treatment as prescribed. Okay, now we're going to go into drug reactions, and this is the area that tends to be tricky. The first term is contraindication, C-O-N-T-R-A-I-N-D-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. A contraindication is a factor in the patient's condition that makes the use of a particular medication or medical treatment dangerous. And this term is tricky primarily because of the spelling. It's contraindication. The next two terms are ones that really tend to get confused. The first one is idiosyncratic reaction. I-D-I-O-S-Y-N-C-R-A-T-I-C. Idiosyncratic reaction. Now, idiosyncratic reaction is an unexpected reaction to a drug that is peculiar to an individual. Now, notice all we're saying is it's unexpected. We're not saying whether it's good, it's bad, or indifferent. It's not making a judgment as to whether this is harming the patient. We're just saying it's something unusual, something that's not expected. That is a different term from our next one, which is adverse drug reaction. A-D-V-E-R-S-E, drug reaction. Adverse drug reaction is an undesirable reaction. That means it's bad. It's an undesirable reaction that accompanies the principal response for which the drug was taken. This is more commonly known as a side effect. I will tell you that most students miss this item on tests. When they see unexpected reaction, they immediately think adverse. That's wrong. If it's an unexpected reaction, it's idiosyncratic. If it's undesirable, that is bad. That's an adverse drug reaction. And then we have a third term that could be confused with the previous two, and that is paradoxical reaction. P-A-R-A-D-O-X-I-C-A-L. Paradoxical reaction. Now, paradoxical reaction is a reaction that is the exact opposite of the normally expected results. For example, you could take an antidepressant. What's it supposed to do? Make you less depressed, improve your mood. 
but a paradoxical reaction would be if you take the antidepressant and it makes you more depressed. That's the exact opposite. And again, notice that's not necessarily adverse in the sense of a bad side effect. Okay, It is unexpected, but more precisely, it's the opposite. If it's the opposite reaction, it's paradoxical. If it's just unexpected in general and peculiar to an individual, then it's idiosyncratic. And finally, only if it's undesirable or bad is it an adverse drug reaction. So spend a little time practicing those three terms to make sure you've got them straight. The next term is drug interaction. Drug interaction refers to two drugs reacting with each other in ways that again are unexpected or potentially harmful. It's when two drugs taken together react to cause something unexpected or potentially harmful. And then finally we have potentiation. P-O-T-E-N-T-I-A-T-I-O-N. Potentiation. This is a special type of drug reaction in which the effect of one drug is increased by another. Okay, well now we're going to go ahead and do some practice over these terms relating to drug reactions. Number one, a factor in a patient's condition that makes a particular medication or treatment dangerous or ill-advised is known as what? That's contraindication. C-O-N-T-R-A-I-N-D I C A T I O N. Contraindication. The patient's consistency and accuracy in following a prescribed regimen is known as what? That's compliance. C O M P L I A N C E. What is the term for an unexpected drug reaction? I hope you didn't say side effect or adverse drug reaction. If it's unexpected, it's idiosyncratic. I-D-I-O-S-Y-N-C-R-A-T-I-C. What is the term for a drug interaction in which one drug increases the effect of the other drug? That's potentiation. P-O-T-E-N-T-I-A-T-I-O-N. Potentiation. What is the term for a drug named for its chemical name that's not protected by a brand or a trademark? That's generic. G-E-N-E-R-I-C. A specialist in formulating and dispensing medication as prescribed is known as a what? That specialist is a pharmacist, P-H-A-R-M-A-C-I-S-T. An undesirable drug reaction that accompanies the principal response is known as what? That's the adverse drug reaction. A-D-V-E-R-S-E, adverse drug reaction, commonly known as a side effect. What is the term for the study of the nature, uses, and effects of substances used for medicinal purposes? That's pharmacology. P-H-A-R-M-A-C-O-L-O-G-Y. And what is the term for a drug reaction that is the exact opposite 
of that which is expected. That's paradoxical. P-A-R-A-D-O-X-I-C-A-L. Okay, part two. We're going to talk about types of drugs and administration. The first one is palliative. P-A-L-L-I-A-T-I-V-E. A palliative is a substance that eases symptoms but does not cure a disease. The next term is analgesic, A-N-A-L-G-E-S-I-C. This is a broad term. It's a class of drugs that relieve pain without affecting consciousness. The most common analgesic that we all know about is aspirin. The next term is antipyretic, A-N-T-I-P-Y-R-E-T-I-C. That is a medication that reduces fever. Aspirin is also an antipyretic. Not all drugs do both at the same time. For example, if you took ibuprofen for your pain, that is not going to help a fever. So you don't want to take ibuprofen, commonly Advil, for example. You don't want to take that if you're sick and you've got a fever because it's not going to do anything for your fever. It will just relieve pain. The next term is anti-inflammatory, A-N-T-I hyphen I-N-F-L-A-M-M-A-T-O-R-Y. Well, that ought to be fairly self-explanatory. That's any medication that reduces inflammation. Going back to our examples, aspirin is a good anti-inflammatory. So is ibuprofen. But Tylenol, which is acetaminophen, That will not reduce your inflammation. So you don't want to take that if you've got arthritis, for example. However, it is a good antipyretic. It will reduce your fever, and it will relieve pain, but it does not relieve inflammation. And the next term is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. N-O-N hyphen S-T-E-R-O-I-D-A-L and then anti, A-N-T-I hyphen inflammatory, I-N-F-L-A-M-M-A-T-O-R-Y. And this is commonly abbreviated NSAID, capital N, capital S, capital A, capital I, capital D, NSAID. And this, again, is a a general class of drugs. It's a class of non-steroidal medications that relieve pain by reducing inflammation. And I've already talked about a couple of examples Aspirin is an NSAID, as is ibuprofen. On the other hand, acetaminophen is not, because it does not affect inflammation. Okay, and then we've got some terms related to how drugs are administered. The first one is topical administration. T-O-P-I-C-A-L, topical. Topical administration is when you have a liquid or an ointment that's just rubbed into the skin. You know, something like Bengay or if you have over-the-counter antibiotic cream for like if you cut your finger or something, you just rub it into the skin and it treats the surface of the skin. Topical administration. Now that can be confused with the next term. It's not the same thing. And that is transdermal administration. T R A N S. D-E-R-M-A-L, transdermal administration. Now, transdermal means through the skin. Transdermal is when you have a patch that is applied to the skin, and the patch contains some medication, which then is absorbed through the skin and transmitted into the bloodstream. That's the important difference between transdermal and topical. Topical just stays on the surface of the skin. It doesn't absorb into the bloodstream. A good example of a transdermal administration would be like the nicotine patches. You put the patch on, it contains nicotine. It absorbs through the skin into the bloodstream, so you get the same effect in your body as if you were getting nicotine through a cigarette. And, of course, the idea is to help you quit smoking. And then, finally, we've got parenteral administration, P-A-R-E-N-T-E-R-A-L. 
Parenteral administration refers to administration in a manner other than through the digestive tract, and usually what it means is an injection. And then the textbook goes into four types of injections. The first one is intradermal, I-N-T-R-A-D-E-R-M-A-L. As the term would imply, this means into the skin. This is an injection made into the middle layers of the skin, that is the dermis. Then we have the subcutaneous injection, S-U-B-C-U-T-A-N-E-O-U-S. That would be made into the subcutaneous layer of the skin or the fatty layer beneath the skin. Then we have intramuscular injection, I-N-T-R-A-M-U-S-C-U-L-A-R. That's made into a muscle. And finally, intravenous. And this is a little tricky to spell. It's I-N-T-R-A, intra, venous is V-E-N-O-U-S. Intravenous injection would be made directly into a vein. Okay, now we'll go ahead and do some practice over these terms. Administration of a drug by rubbing it into the skin is known as what? Well, that's topical. We're only going into the skin. That's it. Topical administration. What is the general term for administration of a drug by injection? That would be parenteral administration. P-A-R-E-N-T-E-R-A-L. What is the term for an injection made into the fatty layer just below the skin? That's the subcutaneous injection. S-U-B-C-U-T-A-N-E-O-U-S. What is the term for a medication that reduces fever? That's an antipyretic, A-N-T-I-P-Y-R-E-T-I-C. What is the term for any medication that reduces pain without affecting consciousness? That's an analgesic, A-N-A-L-G-E-S-I-C. A medication that eases symptoms but does not cure a disease is known as what? That's a palliative, P-A-L-L-I-A-T-I-V-E. Administration of a drug by means of a patch that allows the medication to be absorbed into the bloodstream through the skin is known as what? That's transdermal, T-R-A-N-S-D-E-R-M-A-L. And what is the term for a class of non-steroidal medications that relieve pain by reducing inflammation? Well, that's the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug commonly referred to as an NSAID, capital N, capital S, capital A, capital I, capital D. Okay, and for the third part, we're going to look at abbreviations. Now, I know for the most part in this class we've discouraged abbreviations because abbreviations are dangerous. If you use one incorrectly, it can cause big problems. But there are some very, very commonly used abbreviations related to administering drugs. And so we are going to go over those. You could expect these on the test. And these really look like a bizarre alphabet soup. I'm going to try to group them together and clue you in as to how they work. And that will make it easier for you, I hope. The first abbreviation we have is PRN. P period, R period, N period. And PRN 
means as needed. And one silly way to remember that is think of, please, I'm ready now. That means you you can take the drug as you need it, whenever you want, basically. So if you think, please, I'm ready now to take the drug as needed. Then we have a group of terms that are the day terms. And they have ID in the abbreviation, I period, D period. These refer to day, and there's three of them. The first one is B-I-D, and that means twice a day. And think of by, bicycle means two. B-I-D, by, B-I-D is twice a day. Then we have T-I-D, which stands for three times a day. And think of tri, as in tricycle. Tri means three. T-I-D, tri day, three times a day. And then we have Q-I-D. This refers to four times a day. And Q, think of quarter. How many quarters in a dollar? There's four. Quarter refers to four or one-fourth. So Q-I-D, quarter a day, four times a day. Then we have some abbreviations with Q in them. They lead with Q, and Q stands for every. We have, first of all, QD, which means every day. QD, every day. And then we have QH. QH means every hour. And so you want to be a little careful not to confuse QD and QH, which is every day, every hour, with QID, which is four times a day. Remember, the terms that have ID in them are referring to how many times a day. And then we have the O abbreviations. They're abbreviations that have O in them, and they refer to by mouth. And a way to remember this is O stands for oral, which would be mean pertaining to the mouth. That's how I would remember it. P-O means by mouth. And capital N, capital P, capital O, N-P-O means nothing by mouth, which makes sense. P-O by mouth, put an N in front of it for nothing, nothing by mouth. And then we have the C abbreviations. The C abbreviations refer to meals, and a way I would remember that is think consumption. If you're consuming something, you're eating it. Consumption is a meal, eating something. And then we have two terms related to that. We have AC, which is before meals, and we have PC, which is after meals. And think of A, ante, as in A-N-T-E. Ante means before something. Think of anterior, in front of something. This would be like before consumption. AC, before meals, before consumptions. PC, think P, post. Post means after. So post-consumption, after meals. Anti-consumption, before meals. AC and PC. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and do some practice on these abbreviations. Which abbreviation means three times a day? Okay, it's one of these day abbreviations, so it has to have ID, three, think, try. This is T-I-D, three times a day. What is the abbreviation for before meals? Well, that's A-C. Again, think of ante, A-N-T-E, before consumption, which would be like you're eating something. A-C, before meals. What does the abbreviation N-P-O stand for? Well, that's nothing by mouth. Again, O, oral, mouth. That's one of the two relating to by mouth. What is the abbreviation for as needed?
Remember, please, I'm ready now. That's P-R-N. You can take something as needed. What is the abbreviation for every hour? That's one of those Q terms. It would have to be Q-H every hour. What does the abbreviation B-I-D stand for? That's another one of those day abbreviations, ID, B-I-D, B-I-D, think bicycle, it's twice a day. What is the abbreviation for every day? Well, again, those every abbreviations all have Q in them. This would be QD for every day. What does the abbreviation PC stand for? Well, politically correct, right? Everyone knows that. No, it's not politically correct. Wrong context there. In this context, PC is post-consumption, right? Think after meals. What is the abbreviation for by mouth? That's P-O. And finally, what is the abbreviation for four times a day? That's Q-I-D. Again, the times a day terms have I-D in them. Q, think quarter, four quarters in a dollar. Q-I-D, four times a day. All right, well, that does it for Chapter 15. Good luck to you in your preparations for the test. I know for a lot of you, you're doing this under pressure. But this is it. It's the end. You're finished. You can pat yourself on the back. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.